if all the properties of a type already conform to codable, then a type itself can conform to codable with no extra work. Swift will synthesize all the code required to archive and unarchive our type as needed. However, things are a little bit trickier when working with classes that are using the observable macro because of the way it rewrites our code behind the scenes. To see this problem in action, let's write a simple observable class here that has a single property called name. I'll say at observable class user conforms to codable and has a single property called name with a default value of Taylor. Just to make our life easier. And now we can write a little bit of Swift UI code down here that encodes an instance of that class when a button's pressed and just prints out the resulting text. So I'll say we have a button saying encode Taylor with an action being encode Taylor. And that method's going to be func encode Taylor. We'll make a data instance using try exclamation mark JSON encoder dot encode a new user. Obviously you wouldn't write this kind of code in production, you wouldn't use try exclamation mark and similar, but it's just testing purposes, that's all it is. Once that's done, I'll make a new string by decoding that thing straight away so we can read the contents easily. I'll say string decoding that data as utf8.self and simply print out that string. So we can see uh, what the thing actually looks like in JSON form. I'll choose iPhone 15 Pro, press Command R, and run the code back. So again, simple observable class here with one property, a button to encode an instance of it straight away, and the data encoding it and just printing out the JSON we get back. Let's press the button. Boom. So what you'll see might be unexpected. We're seeing name Taylor's here, but it's underscore name rather than name, and we have this observation registrar along for the ride too. What's happening here, if you remember, is that the observable macro, this thing here, is quietly rewriting our class so it can be monitored by SwiftUI. And here, that rewrite's kind of leaking. You're seeing the internals here, which might cause all sorts of problems. If you're sending JSON data to a server, for example, and expect to receive name, Without the underscore, it might have no idea to look for the underscore version and use that instead. To fix this, we're going to tell Swift exactly how it should encode and decode the data in the class here. This is done by nesting an enum inside the class with an exact name called coding keys. This thing needs a raw value of strings plus a conformance with a different protocol called coding key. And yes, that's confusing. Enum must be called coding keys and the protocol is coding key, but it does matter. Inside the enum, you make one case for every property you want to save. Maybe one, maybe all of them, it's down to you. You then use the raw value of the enum case to say what name that should have in your JSON. So we'd say just name the string, not underscore name, to rename the thing across. And so for example, in here we might say, there's an enum called coding keys with a raw value string and uh, a coding key conformance. And I'll say when you see underscore name, when you plan to write the underscore name value out, I like can see it's doing right here. Don't do that. Use the name name. No underscore here. So when you see this value, reading or writing it, actually make it this value instead. So let's press Command R and give it a try. I'll press Encode Taylor again, and boom. We get what we expect in the first place. Just name Taylor. So no more underscore, no more observation registrar along for the ride. And this key mapping works both ways. So that if we receive some JSON in the future, and it's just called name like this, internally Swift will say, aha, that's remapped to my underscore name rewritten variable behind the scenes.